Hi everybody, today we're going to go over some pK calculations and concentration calculations for an IV effusion. So here's the problem. A patient was given a single 220 milligram dose, so just one dose, 220 milligrams of drug X as a 60 minute infusion. So what is this? this is probably really an intermittent infusion. Based on the information below, calculate half-life elimination rate and volume of distribution. How many hours after the end of the infusion will the concentration reach 2 milligrams? In other words, how many hours will it take to get to 2? So here's our data on the left. It's a graph. And what we see here is it looks like we have a graph that shows the infusion from 0 to 1 hours. So that would be here, 0 to 1 hours. At the end of the infusion, the concentration that was measured by the lab was 14.4 milligrams per liter at one hour. And then it looks like there was a second concentration taken at five hours, which was 3.6 milligrams per liter. So with this information, let's get to calculating. So the first thing we can calculate based on this information is the elimination rate. And that is going to be calculated by this equation here, which is the negative on top of the natural log of concentration 1 with its associated time 1 at the bottom in the denominator minus the natural log of concentration 2, which again, time 2 in the bottom correlates to that concentration 2. So let's plug in the values from our data here to calculate Ke. And that would be the natural log of 14.4 milligrams per liter minus the natural log of 3.6 milligrams per liter over one hour minus five hours. And if we calculate that, we get 0 0.347 hours to the negative one. And that is because the top becomes unitless. We have hours on the bottom, so it's hour to the negative one. Now that we have the elimination rate constant, we can go ahead and use this equation to calculate the half-life. And with this equation, we can plug in the elimination rate, which equals... Now, you may have noticed that 14.4 and 3.6 are related in that if you divide 14.4 by 2, two times, you get 3.6, meaning it's two half-lives. So from here to there, these are two half-lives. And so we've had a time passage of one to five hours, meaning four hours total, so two hours. So you could have figured it out from the graph as well. And then use that to calculate Ke by rearranging the equation we use to calculate T one half. Now let's calculate volume of distribution. A volume of distribution has a little stickier equation, if you will, because we're lurking with an intermittent infusion. Let's see what that looks like. So that equation involves k sub zero or k naught, which is actually the infusion rate times one minus e to the negative elimination rate times t prime, which is the intermittent infusion time, so how long it took, over the elimination rate constant times C max, so really that concentration right at the end of the infusion, minus C predose, any pre-concentrations we already have on board, times E to the minus elimination rate constant times T prime, again, the infusion time. So let's start to plug some of these values in. Now the first thing you might ask is we don't have the infusion rate, but we actually do because this is a single 220 milligram dose over 60 minute infusion, which just changes easily into 220 milligrams per hour. Let's go ahead and plug in the rest of the equation. As you can see here, our infusion time is one hour.
So on the bottom we also have the elimination rate constant, the max concentration which we got from our graph of 14.4, the pre-dose, which we actually don't have any pre-dose here because we're assuming the patient was given a single 220 milligram dose, so it's zero. And then again, the exponential equation that we did in the top in the numerator of this calculation equation. So let's go ahead and plug and chug all of this. Now, when you do this, you have to be careful. I would probably do it in sections where you start with the expon exponential portion first and then subtract from one and then multiply it by 220, and then save this somehow, or write down your answer, and then do the bottom in the same manner. Now we know that this portion of the equation right here will equal zero, so we probably wouldn't even do this part. So let's go ahead and plug and chug that and see what we get. And what we get is 12.9 meters. So we've been able to successfully calculate the elimination rate constant the half-life either from an equation or the graph, and the volume of distribution. Now let's look at the last part of this question. How many hours after the end of the infusion will the concentration reach two milligrams per liter? So how do we do this? We have calculations that allow us to have a starting concentration, and it'll get us to an ending concentration. So we need to figure out how to use that equation and manipulate it so that we can figure out the time. So let's see what that equation looks like. So it's always a concentration at a later time is equal to either a dose, which would be dose over volume of distribution, or a concentration times some sort of elimination factor. And the elimination factor is generally e to the minus ke times time. So we can make it so that we want to figure out the concentration at two milligrams per liter with a starting concentration which we can make max in our case which would be 14.4 and solve it for t but we have to rearrange it first with a little bit of basic math skills that we probably learned a long time ago so let's see what that looks like first we move the c max below the C2 so we can isolate the exponential part of the equation. And then what we do is raise both sides to the natural log, which will help us remove the exponential part of the equation. So you can see now we've removed the exponential part of the equation on the left and we're left with the natural log on the right. So again, if we tuck the KE down in the denominator here, and we also use that manipulation that allows us to make a natural log that has a division or a ratio in it into a subtraction form. It'll look much neater. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is what our final equation looks like. So let's plug and chug here. So we have, again, our final concentration we're interested in, the 2 milligrams per liter, minus our max concentration over the elimination rate, which equals 5.7 hours. So this tells us from the start on our graph here at the C max to get down to 2, it would take 5.7 hours. Now, one last thing we can take a look at is we could figure out how long it would take us to get down to two milligrams per liter from the, our second measure concentration of 3.6 simply by changing out the numbers in the equation here that we had derived. And what this equals is 1.7 hours and that should make sense on how these relate because these two concentrations we originally had on the graph were four hours apart, so it's an additional 1.7 hours to get to two milligrams per liter. So I hope this helps give an overview of how we use different equations based on a scenario where a patient is getting an IV infusion, this time an intermittent infusion, to calculate those PK constants and to manipulate concentration equations to figure out how long it will take to get certain concentrations. 
Thank you for your attention.